This is the H&Y Evo filter system. And there's really two key features I want you to know about this filter system. The first is the price. The pricing of this system means that if you're gonna buy any two filters that are in either of these kits, the photography kit has six filters and the video kit has five filters. If you're gonna go out and buy any two filters, you're gonna be able to cover the price of the entire kit, including all the different filters, the lens adapter, the magnetic system, a carrying case is all gonna be covered by the equivalent of buying two high quality filters. And the other thing I want you to know about this filter system is that it is both a thread on filter system and a magnetic filter system. That means that when you're out in the wild, running and gunning, moving around, situations where you might bump the lens and knock off a magnetic filter system, you can use it as a thread on filter system because every single filter in this kit has threads on it like any other threaded filter. But if you're in a studio or a controlled environment or you've got the camera on a tripod, then all you gotta do is use the magnetic filter system and you get the convenience of a magnetic filter system. This is the first filter system that I know about that has this specific set of features. And I wouldn't be surprised if we just see all magnetic filter systems follow this in the future because it just makes so much sense and it just seems so simple. I don't know why somebody didn't think of it before. And in full disclosure, I would like to thank H&Y for sending the filter kit out and sponsoring this video. But as always, all opinions are my own and H&Y had no say in the making of the video. I've been sent out the video kit, but I wanna quickly go over what is in the photo kit so you kinda of know what kind of value you're getting if you do look at the photo kit. You're gonna get six total filters in that kit. You're going to get a circular polarizer. You're gonna get an ND8, 16, 32, and 64. You're gonna get the adapter for the size lens you've got for the magnetic use of the filter system. System, you're going to get a lens cap and you're going to get a nice carrying storage pouch. It's like a semi hard sided pouch, which is actually really nice. Looking at the video filter kit, which is what I've been sent out, to start with, you're going to get a variable ND filter, which is going to allow you to control your shutter speed so you get proper motion blur in your shots. In addition to that, you're going to get a blue streak filter, which essentially impersonates an anamorphic look and gives you an anamorphic flare. You're going to get a black pro mist filter. Now the black pro mist filters are best used in more dark situations. That gives you that sort of moody sort of look and it also gives you that blooming of the highlights and blooming of the lights when they're in the scene. Something that you often see in videos and even on YouTube, but you see it in movies a lot. So you're gonna get the black pro mist filter. Then you're gonna get the white pro mist filter, which a lot of people don't know about and a lot of people don't know the difference between a white pro mist filter and a black pro mist filter. And essentially the difference is the mist that is on the filter itself is white versus black, which is pretty logical when you think about it. But the difference in the image that you get is a black pro mist filter disperses the light, but it, it absorbs the light a bit more. So you generally reuse a, a black pro mist filter in situations where you've got a dark moody scene or a dark background candlelit scene, something like that. You'll use the white pro mist filter in situations that are a bit more brightly lit during the daytime, high key scenes. Often you'll see it used in landscape or portrait. It really just softens the whole image across the frame. And it's, it's not so much for those dark moody shots, it's more for a daylight brighter shot. So I think you can think of it as when you've got a bright scene, you use the white one, you use a dark scene, you use the dark one. And that's generally how you see it used. And I actually think a lot of people in their YouTube videos or a lot of videos where they're talking head videos, you see people use the black pro mist in situations where I think that actually be better off with the white pro mist. So just something to keep in mind. And then in addition to that, you've got one that I have not used or seen before. It's a 4X cross filter, which gives lights a sort of star shape when they're in the scene, which is kind of unique. And I could see it used in maybe sci-fi or dream scenes or something like that. And in addition to all that, you've also got the lens cap. Now, obviously you wouldn't be using all of these stacked like this, but you can stack them like this and use a different combination of filters to get whatever sort of look you want. Now, when we have a look at the performance of the variable ND filter, because that is a big part of this kit, and it's probably the one filter that you will always use and is absolutely critical that we get high quality out of it. The first thing I wanna do is talk about color cast. Now, even filters that say they have no color cast, all of these variable ND filters have some degree of color cast. And what I found with this one is I get a slightly warmer tone. If I take the camera, and I'll just show you the test shots. I took the camera, just shut it up, set it up to a custom white, white balance, shot a white card, and then shot a normal photo. And then I put the variable ND filter on and took another photo. And what you'll see is it had a slightly warmer cast. 
I then went up through the different ND ranges or the different stops. You know, I went to, what is it, uh, two, three, four, five, and sort of up to max. And what I found is although the tone was warmer when I put the ND filter on, it held that same tone throughout the entire range. So we didn't get a changing of color cast, which I think was important. But even more important than this for most people and myself included, whenever I shoot video, I set a custom white balance in the camera using a white or gray card. And what I found was with this variable ND filter, once you put it on, if you set your custom white balance just like you normally would without an ND filter by using a card, you'll find that the colors match pretty well exactly to what they were if I set the custom white balance without the filter. So in my normal workflow, I set up the camera, I use the custom white balance, and that's the way I set my white balance in camera for the video or the shot. I do it in all my YouTube videos. If you put that ND filter on and do the same thing, you're going to get the exact same look. So although it does shift the colors, it does it in a consistent way that if you set custom white balance in the camera, you are still going to get completely accurate colors, which virtually look indistinguishable from the one shot without the ND filter. The other thing I want you to know about the variable ND filter is the cross pattern. Now, in the past, they used to sell variable ND filters that went from like very low number to a very high number, and you put them on the camera, and as you crank them up, you get this cross pattern, you got them at all different times. And then manufacturers starting releasing ND filters that had fixed ranges. So you'd have one that went from one to four or five, and another one from six to nine. And it did become a bit more complicated, and really what they're trying to do is avoid that cross pattern. But when you do that, you actually are limiting the use of the ND filter. So it is kind of a funny one. What they've done with this one is they've given you a minimum, which is probably somewhere around three stops, and they've given you a maximum, which is an ND1000, which is probably 10 stops or something like that. And in use, it depends on the focal length that you're using on the camera, what level of ND you can use. So the lens I've got on this camera is a 20 to 60 millimeter lens. At 20 millimeters, I was actually able to use it up to a five stop comfortably. Looking at the back of the camera, I thought maybe it was limiting at four, but I actually found when I reviewed the footage, it was good all the way up to five. And h and says that at five stops, you can shoot on a 24 millimeter. H&Y also says on a 75 millimeter, you can go all the way to max, which is your ND1000. I found when shooting this at 60 millimeters, I was falling somewhere between that five and that max before the cross pattern came in. So where the cross pattern comes in varies based on the lens you're using. And I think the performance overall is great. You just need to know, depending on what lens you're using, how much ND you're able to use. And in most situations, the fact that you can go to five on just about any lens means that you've really got the range you need for most applications. So I'm very impressed with the quality of the filter system, particularly given the price point. And that leaves me to ask, who is this kit for? Well, to start with, I think that photo kit is gonna be perfect for people shooting landscape photography because there is a range of different NDs. And if you're a landscape shooter, if you're doing those slow down sort of motion and blurring of the waves, blurring of the sky or the clouds going by, you're gonna to wanna to have the option of all those filters. And eventually you're gonna end up with all those filters in your kit. Those are gonna be very high quality filters. And for the price you pay for two of them, you're gonna get a complete six a six filter kit. So I think the photography one is almost a complete no brainer. The video one that I've got is a little bit more complicated. And I only say that because I think it represents excellent value based on the number of different filters you get in the kit. But I look at the different types of filters and not everybody is necessarily going to want to use all those different filters, whether it be the cross filter or the blue streak filter. So if you are going to use most of those filters or all but maybe two, I still think it represents excellent value. But if you're somebody that's really only needs a variable ND filter and you don't need like the couple pro mist filters, then I think you're probably just better off buying a variable ND filter. But having said that, if you do look at the variable ND filter and the couple of ProMist filters, you're already probably ahead of the game. So I think in filmmaking, it's entirely likely that people will be using those three filters. And even if you're only buying those three filters, I think the kit represents reasonable value.